Paul. Mario. What do I do with my hands? We haven't been in here in a while. Just keep them there. Just keep them there? Okay. Just keep them there. <laughs> Ten and six. Are you predicting the Bills record? <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> After you smash that subscribe button, go over to sportscaster.com where you will see us every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, uh, before you watch the video, Paul and I have a very special announcement. We've been banging the drum for this for a couple weeks, and time's running out, and spaces are running out. So mm -hmm. if you want a chance to get into the uh, giveaway that we're doing with all the Bills merch and donate to a wonderful uh, foundation, um, Paul's going to give you some information on that right now. <laughs> so in the description, you're going to find our PayPal, our Venmo, and our Cash App. It, uh, we're doing your traditional football squares, right? Uh, it is $5 a square, a maximum of five squares per game. Now we're doing the next four games, right? Yep, so you can get into them all right now if you want. So you got the Ravens, the Steelers, the, Steelers, the Patriots, Patriots, and, and the, the Jets, Jets okay. right? So those four games. Uh, we're giving away autographed merch. It's stuff that we got signed for you. And the great thing is it's totally random. So you don't have to pick what square you want. We're going to randomly assign them. And we're also randomly assigning the prizes. Exactly. So we don't know what you're going to win either. Nope. Uh, we're going to reveal those on our post game or if we're doing the play-by-play -play on uh, Sportscaster or YouTube, we're going to open them right at halftime. Yep, absolutely. Um, and we're going to send them to you and ship them to you. But you want to get in now because we're trying to raise $2,000 for the Punt Foundation and spots are really starting to fly out. So if you want to get in on a chance to win some pretty awesome autographed merch, I'm talking a Levi Wallace autograph helmet, a Devin Singletary autograph mini helmet, an uh, Oliver. And, and Oliver autograph mini helmet, a uh, Harrison Phillips uh, mini football, um, a Trey, Trey, no, Trey? I think we, do we have a mini football for Trey White? I don't know. We do have a mini football for we Trey We got White. a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff that we're giving away, yeah, we but do. it's Bill's merch and you're donating to a great cause, the Punt Foundation, mm -hmm. Brian Mormon's Punt Foundation. We're working in conjunction with 26 Shirts and uh, David Adams, so we want to do this. You guys have given us so much. We want to try to give back. Yep. And uh, we're and you can win some sweet bill stuff in, yep. in the process. So. Oh, we'd love to send it to you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd so. love to send it anywhere in the world. We don't care. We sent one giveaway to Italy. We don't care. Yeah. So we'll send it wherever, wherever you live. That's where it'll go. We <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. sent that. Oh, yeah. The autograph Thurman and Tom, uh, Thomas helmet. Yeah. Uh, so after you're done subscribing and watching the video, please click click down in the links. We mm -hmm. got PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. And uh, let's go to the video. It's, it's interesting you took, <clears throat> you brought up a topic to me about. You mean the 12 minutes that we talk when we're not in the car doing an episode? <laughs> we don't talk That's much. why it's easy to remember. Uh, yeah, right? When we talk about something, it's like we're done talking about it and it's over. Mm -hmm. But, so we failed to bring it up on top, on shows. <laughs> like, we already talked about that. We're not going to talk about that. Not with them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's been so many things that we we could have covered over the last two years oh. that we just pissed into the wind. <laughs> That's all we did. We're like, oh yeah, we talked about this. Oh yeah, yeah, remember, let's go find that quote. Remember we said that? It would have been... Where's Doesn't the clip? Exist. Where's Doesn't the exist. clip? Doesn't, Doesn't exist. Because we talked about it for four, four minutes on the phone of the 12 minutes we talk when we're not recording an episode. But the topic was, and a very interesting one. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, that, that deserves a lot of credence. Are, is Buffalo a place to be, Mary? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, that's that's a really, really big, big point because everybody talks about the process, the process, the process, right? Yeah. This is part of the this is part of that process, is you want to build a culture that players want to come to your organization. They yeah. rebuilt this team from the ground up. McDermott said in, a, said in a press conference uh, after the Dallas game that he wanted Buffalo to be a place where players can come and be the best version of themselves. A great line. It is, right? Yeah. You're saying like you've heard that before. No, I'm saying it. I just heard it from you right now. Oh, yeah. It's okay. a great line. It's it a great line. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of jealous I didn't think of it myself. Pretty good from Tony Robbins. <laughs> Tony Robbins has a lot of teeth. The banana hands. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, banana hands. You want to be the best version of yourself. Might be one of the best impressions you do. Why? Because he's a big goof? No, you got the same chin. 
And that concludes our show. <laughs> so McDermott says that he wants players to come here to be the best version of themselves. I mean, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. That's phenomenal. I mean, winning, like you said all the time, you've been saying it all year. No one's complaining. No one's really getting upset. Winning cures a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Sure does. Uh, especially within the building. We could say, I mean, I think we said it on a couple of our streams. We said, listen, Beasley probably could have been frustrated about what was going on mm-hmm. and the fact that he's always open and he's not getting the ball. Mm-hmm. Understandably so. But since they were winning, you didn't hear anything from him. Right. Maybe because of the culture. Mm-hmm. Maybe because of the, the fact that they're winning. But it has to be, you figure it has to be one or the other or both. Right. Which, if you have those things, if you're winning, yeah, mm-hmm. guys are going to want to go there. And if you have a good culture, they're going to want I mean, it's no secret that football players in Buffalo are, are worshipped. They're like royalty oh, yeah. here. Absolutely, um, they are. Being such a being a small market team, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go to New York City, okay, yeah. you got the you got the Jets to play there, the Giants, the Rangers, the Islanders, the you know mm-hmm. the, the Knicks, Nets. You got all these other pro teams that are that could vie for attention. The Yankees. The Yankees. I was figuring. I'd, I'd say that one for you. Are the only the only sports team you didn't mention. Oh, well, the Nets. Did you say the Nets? I said the Nets. Yeah, how do you not say? That? Never mind. Because I figured that's for you. You're a Yankees fan. Did you see the 10-year challenge of the Yankees pennant? <laughs> Still at 27. Laugh it up. Laugh it up. <laughs> <laughs> Point being is that you got the you got the Bisons, Bandits, Sabers, and and Bills, and right. the Bills, for the most part, take the the mantle of oh, the, the most recognized. Uh, players, but you're you're royalty here. You are big time. So if you're a player that that you know likes that likes being in a small market, likes that family atmosphere, why not? Well, and I I think it goes to show like let's go back. Let's just look at the Bills' defensive line because I think this is a great conversation to have, right? Yeah. So the Bills, and, and you brought up Cole Beasley being open all the time and not getting you know not getting a ton of targets. Um, think of it this way, right? If the Bills were, instead of 9-3, and three, if the Bills were 7-5. and five, Okay. But you had no pass rush until recently. That's a panic button situation. A little bit more. Well, what if, what if you're, you know, what if you're 5-7, and seven, right? Now you're in a big panic situation. The Bills could wait because they were winning for things to happen. Like, the pass rush wasn't really there. Yeah. But because they kept winning, it's like, well, we'll figure it out. It's it's okay. We'll figure it out. And and it, it, a winning some, you know, some early games uh, afforded them the opportunity to be patient. I think that's a big thing in the NFL because a lot of times you're in panic mode the whole time. You're, you're fighting for – you're looking for a solution. What's the fast solution? Mm-hmm. Right? What's the quick solution? Let's just do that. Because the season's so short, you can't wait it out. Baseball is 162 games. Baseball, you know, baseball and football are totally polar opposite. Yeah. Football's got 16 games, so you can't wait. But the Bills winning early, I think, afforded them the opportunity to finish, you know, figure some stuff out. Just look at the defensive line. We'll just use the defensive line in, as an example, right? Yeah. Jerry Hughes, former first-round pick. Yep. Right? Star. Former first-round. Right. Uh, at Oliver, obviously, first-round first pick. Round. Shaq. Shaq, Corey Lewis. first round, first round pick. Trent Murphy, second, second round. round pick. Uh-huh. Um, Harrison Phillips, third round pick. Th- third round pick. Dalton. Jordan Phillips, third round pick. Second, oh, second, second round pick. Because Drake was third that year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Kenyon Drake was a third round pick that year. So Jordan Phillips, second round pick. So you start to see what the, and then you look at the back end. Mm-hmm. You got an undrafted free agent, like a fifth and sixth rounder, and Hyde Boyer. I think they're fifth and sixth rounders. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, just Trey White. Right. You get the lot one lockdown. Yep. But you see, that's where the strength of McDermott and Frazier lie, if I could sidestep right. for a second, yeah. is that, okay, we could take care of the secondary. We know how to get guys in the secondary. Right. Let's take care of that front wall. Right. And you see first and second rounders all up in that front wall. Well, and even Kevin Johnson, first round first yeah. round player, he he played awesome. He did. He played he did, awesome. But he Dallas. wasn't initially on the radar. No. It's just was this, not. This off season. He was the first player they signed, and you're, you're waiting for free agency. Like, we're sitting here going, oh, Free agencies here. The Bills have all this money. Congratulations. You're looking. Bills Twitter. We've signed Kevin Johnson. You're like, like from the Phoenix Sun? Right. 
the, Mitchell the, Friedman. The mayor of Sacramento? Like, who the heck they signed? <laughs> but that sign, look at how smart that signing looks now. Oh, God. Right? It was ridiculous. It and, was... And, not, and on top of that, you had E.J. Gaines here, former first-round pick. Everyone thought Kevin Johnson was going to be Vontae Davis. Right. Because they, he was a former first-rounder that they signed early. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's those guys apparently But again, early. injury history. Yeah. Yeah. But circling it back around to the uh, I mean to the culture and everything that they're trying to build you're saying that the <clears throat> because they were able to, to win the games they were winning they were able to wait on making adjustments yeah I, I don't I just don't think you rush as quickly right yeah. you can buy everybody buys into the fact that it's a work in progress and you'll get there right you're still winning football games and you're like listen guys we're gonna figure this out we're not scoring enough points on offense. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. So you figure it out. If the Bills started the season three and four, Dable's in the box by game six. Right? Dave, Dable's up in the box already. What was their record when they finally signed Corey Lugan? Uh, were they were they seven and three? That sounds like it'd be right. Because that could have been one of the things that swayed him to Buffalo. That's true. Hey, they're seven and three, good, and then they got point. two very winnable games soon. So I want to, I want to be a part of this. Um, he looked at his former team, San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> Just, that's you making had, out he, that deal. He had some injury history too, but the, the guys Hickey and Locke, as we talk about all the time, Dennis Hickey, Dennis Locke, the research uh, moneyball gurus, they probably said, "Listen, hey, you can get this guy for a song." Mm -hmm. But do you think a lot of those wins came early for the Buffalo Bills mm -hmm. when they were? Like, they were so young and so new and put together that they didn't realize it. It was like, oh, we're just playing. We're just trying to play this one and play at a time. And then after they started winning, people were still doubting them. Now it turned to a, a, a focus of, hey, they don't think we're any good. This is ridiculous. You know, Let's I look prove at, everybody wrong. I look at it this way, right? I think a signing like the John Feliciano signing is bigger than just the way he plays on Sunday, Right. Yes. Like, look at the – he's a leader on that offensive line. No doubt. He's the straw that stirs that drink. It's not any other defense – it's not any other offensive player on the line. It is It is Feliciano because he had to be there the lead while Morris was out, mm -hmm. right? He took charge of that line because he was the guy that came over with OG Bobby Johnson. Yeah. So he was the – he had to be a leader. That's why he got brought in. He got brought in because he spoke the language of Bobby Johnson. Right, so he had to be a leader. And look, Allen runs one in, and who's down there to pick him up? Feliciano, doing the dirty dancing. That's left right, all the time. Yep, that's hilarious. By the but way. that's that's who he is. You see him in the hallway after the Dallas game. <laughs> thought the man was. I thought the man was the ultimate warrior for a minute. <laughs> I love the Feliciano signing. From a number standpoint, when mm -hmm. we talked about it, I said like 70-something percent of his contract was guaranteed, so he's, he's going to be a starter. I remember we had a discussion yeah. about this. I think that's a fair gauge when you sign somebody and you look at how much money is They're guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah, because yeah. you, you think that those guys are going to be contributors. And having the familiarity with OG Bobby Johnson, mm -hmm. having the ability to be versatile on the line, Yeah, the communication factor where it's, it's like you almost have two centers now mm -hmm. on that line, um, he affects everybody around him. Morse wasn't there for a little while. Okay, he's going to make the calls. Right. You can have Feliciano call until Morse is up to speed because he was hurt. You got a rookie next to you. Mm -hmm. You can also bring him along. You look at Feliciano, who's just on the other side of the center, right? And he came in, and people are like, well, you know, he's kind of, I'm not going to say he's a journeyman, but, he, you know, he has some problems with some holding penalties. You know, it's, he's not, he doesn't grade out great in the run game. You know, it's, there's, and these are all things we easily could have said when he got signed. Yeah. Easily. It just depends on the type of system you want these guys to be in. Right. Trent Brown was an all-pro playing with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. He gets 70 100 whatever million dollars. Some absurd amount of money. Now they move him to right tackle. Mm -hmm. like, okay. What? Yep. Yep. But, um, you know, I don't think... I don't think the Bills have an issue right now from being able to bring people in because this is going to be a place people want to go, right? Yeah. Because guys are resurrecting their careers here. Trent, Trent Murphy was done in Washington. Yep. Ty Nisaki, he, yep. had a, he, had, he had a reputation that people were saying, well, maybe, like maybe he mm -hmm. could do it. You turn on the film of Ty Nisaki, he looks solid. 
the injuries are the are the bugaboo with him, right? You kind of knew that coming in. But Ty Nasecki, if the Bills were to cut him tomorrow, would immediately be a starting right tackle somewhere. Maybe even a left. I, possibly even, yeah, possibly even a left. Um, Quentin Spain. Talk about mm-hmm. Quentin Spain. Yeah. He was one of the last guys signed off mm-hmm. free agency. And yep. look at what he's doing. And I don't want to talk about it because it's really early. Mm-hmm. Not early in the morning, but it's early. Some of these contracts, only one-year deals. I know. They got to. It's, I'm so glad you brought that up because that was going to be my oh. that was going to be the next thing that I brought up. So January 1st is coming real fast, and why is January 1st great? January 1st is great because it is the end of the third season of uh, some of these players mm-hmm. that are cornerstones of your offense and defense. Right. That you're going to have to sign. So let's, the earliest you can negotiate with them. I'm it sorry. is yeah. right. So Matt Milano, effective January 1st, you can sign him to an extension. If you're Buffalo, how important is Matt Milano to your defense? Critical. Yeah, critical. You can't let him go, right? So he's critical, right? If you're Buffalo and you're trying to build that winning culture, are you going to sign Milano to match Edmonds' contract from a length standpoint? 